Monday, October 25th, 2021, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. I'm seeing a lot of headlines, uh, a lot of demands, especially from, from big business, uh, from industries, for government to fix everything, for governments to fix uh, the problem uh, with the ports. Uh, in California, Long Beach and LA for governments to fix the supply chain. <laughs> and I'm afraid it's not going to fix anything because, as I've said many times before, government is the problem. <laughs> I think it was uh, Ronald Reagan who said, if the government comes and knocks on your door and says the government is here to help, run very fast and he was right of course that central planning government interference disrupts the free market and the more government gets involved uh, the worse it's gonna get so uh, shortages are increasing and they're popping popping up everywhere in, in places that I never realized were that important. Today, there's a story. It's out on uh, Bloomberg, but uh, Zero Hedge is reporting it. And it says, millions of jobs at risk as Europe faces magnesium shortage. <laughs> uh, yes, we've all heard of magnesium, but uh, never realized really until now how important it is to some industries. So we're going to quickly look at that. We're going to look at the market. We're going to look at uh, commodities, uh, oil, natural gas, the base metals. They're continuing to rise. Uh, this is not an um, isolated incident just in one market. It seems to be happening everywhere, unfortunately. How it's going to pan out, how this is going to be solved, I don't know, but one thing's for sure, uh, we can't let government uh, do it. For example, I, I saw a headline here. What's it say? Uh, this is in the FT, <laughs> a story here. Governments need to fix supply chain crisis. Top shipping boss warns. <laughs> the head of Ocean Network Express warns that disruption uh, to the global economy could stretch in, into 2023. Um, I mean, we're going to look at just magnesium, and it, it, it looks like it's another case of being dependent on China, especially. And then when things go awry, like they have in the last 18 months, everything uh, <laughs> gets disrupted, and we have all these problems. So before I, I look at the uh, magnesium article on, on Zero Hedge, that came out on Bloomberg. Just quickly look here on Wikipedia. It says production of magnesium. It says world production was appro approximately uh, 1,100 KT in 2017, with the bulk being produced in China, 930 KT, uh, and Russia, 60, 60 KT. Uh, the United States was was in the 20th century the major world supplier of this metal supplying 45 percent of world production even as recently as 1995 since the chinese mastery of the pigeon process the u.s market share is at seven percent with a single u.s producer left uh, u.s magnesium a renko group company in utah born from now defunct mag corp so there you go <laughs> all the magnesium production is moved to china and russia basically so what is what is it used for magnesium is the third most commonly used structural metal for following iron and aluminium or aluminum as americans would say it the main applications of magnesium are in order Al aluminium alloys, die casting alloyed with zinc, 
removing sulfur in the production of iron, steel, and the production of titanium in the coal crow process. So this is what Zero Hedge says. Europe purchases 95% of its magnesium from China. Not surprising, China uh, produces most of the magnesium out there. Will run out of the industrial uh, metal used to strengthen aluminum or aluminium by the end of November. Uh, that could threaten millions of jobs in sectors from automobiles to aerospace to defense and much more according to Bloomberg. Three trade groups including European Aluminium, Euro Metal and in Industry Al warn shipments from China are dwindling quick due to power cuts to energy intensive magnesium smelters. They said if reserves of this industrial metal aren't increased in the near term, it may result in trade production shortages, factory closures, and job losses. Um, so what do I think is going on here? Well, it, it's like with everything uh, that we've seen, all, all the shortages. Um, it just uh, seems to be that the inflation is catching up with us. <laughs> and what does this have to do with inflation? Well, we've had 50 years of fiat uh, currency inflation since Nixon closed the gold window on August 15th, 1971. And what does inflation do? Well, it destroys capital and uh, it makes everything more expensive uh, and it uh, forces businesses to outsource, to get cheaper, cheaper goods, cheaper materials. So China, of course, has been the recipient of all this inflation. Uh, and and uh, it's one of the reasons why we've, we've uh, been able to print and create a lot of credit uh, and currency out of thin air without seeing rising prices. We've shifted all uh, or a lot of the important uh, components of an industrial economy to another country, uh, mainly to China. And we've been left basically without <laughs> any clothes on, so to speak. The, the tide is receding and, and it, it is showing that uh, European, American, British, Western, Western world industry is totally dependent on, on China. We've outsourced everything. And uh, yes, uh, this is the collapse. A and it's going to keep popping up all these different things that we never really knew about. A few weeks ago, it was, uh, we found out that uh, natural gas and some of the um, things that came out of natural gas uh, uh, and also uh, fertilizers like carbon dioxide, the raw materials that came out of it were used for other things and, and that, that there is now a shortage because there's not enough natural gas. Uh, plus, you, you, you put together this uh, crazy policy of net zero <laughs> and renewable energy that the, the Western world is pushing and, and this is what you get. So. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's going to get any better. Um, so w what else does it say here? Supply of magnesium originating from China has either been halted or reduced drastically since September 2021, resulting in an international supply crisis of unprecedented magnitude, the trade groups said. They urged Brussels, well, that's government again, to urgently work toward immediate actions with their Chinese counterparties to mitigate the short-term critical shortage issue as well as the long-term supply effects on European industries. So up until recently, up until bef before last year, the major problem for the world, especially the Western world, was money and credit. The central banks always came out and obliged 
with the zero rate policy, even negative policy, more QE, more money printing, more programs to bail out banks. But now we're faced with a problem that the real world is completely screwed up. All the supply chains, all the major industries, all the commodities, and uh, people in the real world, people in real industries, they realize that and uh, it's not going to get better. As I said, I can't tell you how it's going to end up, but it's not good. And uh, the solution is not going to be government, even though people seem to still push for that solution. The solution, in my opinion, uh, the broader picture uh, is less government, less interference, free markets, less regulations. But uh, I think that's uh, the last thing in even in businesses' minds and politicians and, and bankers, they want to continue uh, to manage things and it's only going to get worse, unfortunately. You will notice that right now there's a lot of talk in the UK about the budget. Uh, Rishi Sunak, what he's going to do to help the UK economy. Well, <laughs> the, the best thing he could do is to have a budget that's it's one paragraph and very short. But unfortunately, it's not. I think it takes an hour for, for a chancellor to, to present uh, his or her budget. Uh, it has been so for, for decades. And, and that's a shame because government should be minimal. Governments should administer the rule of law. It shouldn't be micromanaging economies. So <laughs> with that, let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning. It's 8.21 a.m. London time. We've got spot gold at 1798.50. It's up just over $5. The high's been 1801 overnight and, and the low has been actually 1787. Silver's up 10 cents at 2442. High's been 2456, low 2424. Uh, Dow futures down six points. NASDAQ 100 futures up 24. S&P uh, future up three. The FTSE uh, futures up 10 points uh, to the currencies. Uh, today, just want to uh, look at uh, first the Turkish lira. Turkish lira is in trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not going up. This is the dollar going up versus the Turkish lira. This is a monthly chart. It doesn't look good. So how come uh, the Turkish lira is falling so much? Uh, well, I think it's a little bit political and also uh, to do with inflation and to do with interference uh, in monetary policy by government. Uh, the uh, president of Turkey, Erdogan, I think there's been a lot of uh, change in the central bank there. Uh, they've, cut, they've raised rates early this year. Now they're cutting even though their rates are relatively high. But the other thing I would say, Turkey is not part of the um, BIS uh, of the club, the people who run the hard currency, so to speak. So that currency gets uh, bashed around. But uh, if anything, it looks like um, this is just showing that uh, it's starting. It's not just in Turkey. It's been in uh, Lebanon. It's been in Brazil. The currency in Brazil is also under pressure. So we're going to continue to see that. And as I've said before, uh, for uh, the major hard currencies and the dollar especially, it's all the shortages, all, all, the, con con uh, all the backwardation, the, the shortages of major commodities that we're seeing. That, that's how we're going to uh, ascertain whether there's weakness in the major currencies, especially the dollar. So back to the uh, other currencies, aside from the lira, today the, uh, the pound is up slightly here, up just under 0.2 of a percent at 137.82. Uh, the euro is uh, unchanged at 116.50. The dollar is up 0.2 versus the yen at 113.70. The dollar is down 0.1 versus the yuan at 637.60. Um, the uh, Aussie dollar is up a quarter of a percent at 
Uh, the dollar is down 0.2 versus the Canadian dollar at 123.50. And the Kiwi dollar is up 0.2 uh, at 71.65. To the commodities now, we've got uh, WTI crude up three quarters of a percent at 84.25. So yeah, the oil uh, chart, long-term chart that you can see here looks very bullish to me. I'm not saying it's going to go up in the straight line. Uh, we will see still a lot of volatility, but the long-term trend to me seems higher. High-grade copper is up over 1% at 452. Natural gas is up 5%. We're almost back up to uh, the six level. We're at 570. So uh, just to finish off here, just quickly look at the 10 year yield. It's trading at 166. It's unchanged. So there you go. Yes, what we need is less government. Uh, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like we're going to get less government, but who knows? Uh, if we do see uh, currency collapse, hyperinflation in the next 12 to 18 months, that could be uh, a blessing in disguise, even though, as we've seen already, it's very disruptive in many countries. And we're starting to see disruptions and inconveniences, inconvenience in Europe, in the US, everywhere. But... Uh, the, the, the blessing disguise is that it would neutralize or destroy the power of governments to do uh, whatever they want with funny money. Uh, so uh, we can only hope. Anyway, uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Rumble, Twitter, Facebook, and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great start to the week. Take care. Bye.